I am pissed off. I'm upset because the majority of people who need a lawyer can't afford one. Makes me angry because I know that in some states like Utah, 97% of defendants in eviction cases show up to that court without a lawyer. I'm mad. I'm mad because of the 100 million Americans with civil justice issues, 80 million of them go it alone without legal representation. Our laws reflect an idea of equal treatment and justice for all, but our legal system, the ways in which our laws manifest themselves, well, it's got some problems that need to be fixed. I saw that the legal system is stacked against us, both from the outside as a citizen, but also from the inside as a lawyer. First off, let me tell you guys this. You need a lawyer, period. And I know what you're thinking, well, lawyers are expensive, but there's going to come a time in all of our lives where we have to interact with that legal system. Whether it's signing a contract, going through a divorce, getting your will together, or signing a new employment, employment contract, well, you might have thought to yourself, yeah, I'm not going to go get a lawyer. How bad could it be? We play this bizarre game of legal Russian roulette more often than any of us care to admit. But let me give you a free piece of legal advice. That's a mistake. Did you know that in Social Security disability hearings, for example, you're 50% more likely to win when you have a lawyer? But then again, even if you do decide to go out and get a lawyer, you're still in for a bit of trouble. The legal system's constantly changing. So they have to devote a bunch of time to legal research, their fees shoot up, and then you hit that catch-22. You need a lawyer. But in the end, there's a good chance that you can't afford the lawyer you need. When I practiced law, I can't tell you how many times people came into my office confused and looking for help. And I had to tell them, you know, I needed 25 hours of time to do research, to be able to get up to speed and best help them. The average consumer lawyer in America bills out at $361 an hour. Legal research takes up 20% of a lawyer's time. And so you could be down nine grand before your lawyers even had a, had a chance to strategize for you. As a first-generation immigrant and a first-generation university student, I went to law school and got a job at the law firm in my neighborhood to represent the people of my community. People with legal needs who couldn't understand the complexities of our legal system. The needs of the poor and middle class weren't just things I talked about in the lecture halls I attended class in. No, they were my everyday reality. And so it hurt me deeply to watch as people stood up, walked out of my office and onto that street to go at it alone. But my life changed and my sense of frustration changed in September of 2014. And it all started with a telephone call. I had just gotten home from spending another long night at the office when my phone rang. It was my friend Gimo Viagle. Now, Gimo's a computer scientist, but he understood the problems with our legal system because he too had gone through it firsthand. When Gimo was a kid, his parents split up, and those legal bills piled up, and it was a crippling, crippling force in his household with his single mom and his sister trying to make ends meet and do the best they could. Me and Jimo had talked about this before. We talked about a whole bunch of the things we saw as problems in our legal system, but that phone call in September 2014 wasn't about talking. It was about doing something. He asked me if I wanted to join him and another computer scientist, Parglas Daulio, in building an artificially intelligent lawyer with the aim to democratize the law. I was in. So I built up the courage, walked up to my parents, and said, I'm quitting my job. 
and I joined them. We believed that if we could bring the power of artificial intelligence to the law, our dream of justice not operating differently depending on your socioeconomic status could become a reality. If we could make this work, then we could remove one of the biggest barriers people face when they try to hire a lawyer, legal research fees. See, the thing about legal research is you can't just fire up a search engine and you know, find all the case precedent you need. Lawyers are spending hundreds of dollars a month for access to database systems, and they type in keywords, and they use Boolean connectors, and the process is clunky. Results come back in the thousands, and so you are constantly on the hunt for the passages you need, and oftentimes you read a whole bunch of cases that are irrelevant, cases that could be 40 pages long. And so it's no surprise that legal research time really adds up. And so we moved into a basement in Toronto, Canada, and we started building the world's first artificially intelligent lawyer, and we named it Ross. Using Ross, lawyers can just ask their research questions, the way they appear in natural language, as if they're asking a colleague of theirs with experience on the matter. And Ross can read over a million pages of law in a second, finding the exact passages they need. And they can find everything they need in minutes, if not seconds. And because Ross is artificially intelligent, it's constantly learning. It's getting smarter every day. Ross doesn't replace lawyers. It allows them to get away from that legal research task and focus on advising their clients, focusing on doing their job. Now, Ross is already saving lawyers 20 to 30 hours of research time in bankruptcy cases, which is the first area we went into. So this means instead of being down that nine grand for that 25 hours of research, well, that cost has been eliminated. It also means that it doesn't matter if you have 20 people researching something or if you have one. That playing field has been leveled. Because justice shouldn't have different price tags. More money shouldn't equal better justice. It's ensuring that the most marginalized in our society are protected people without a voice. Like Billy Jerome Presley, who spent 17 months in a Georgia jail because he couldn't come up with $2,700 in child support payments he owed. He didn't have a lawyer that he could afford to hire. He also didn't get a legal aid lawyer to help him research, and so it is what it is. Or 89-year-old Walter Bloss, who was evicted from his rent control apartment that he had called home for 43 years. Walter didn't benefit from having a lawyer research the law and try to find something that could have kept him in his home and off the street. Legal aid lawyers are overworked, and they have limited amounts of time to help the clients that they are able to take on. In fact, for every one legal aid case a legal aid program takes on, they have to reject one. These lawyers serving on the front lines, helping the most vulnerable people in our society, while they just don't have the right resources, they don't have enough resources. Did you guys know that there's less than one legal aid lawyer who can work for free on civil aid cases for every 10,000 Americans who need one? At Ross, we made a pledge that we would give our technology completely for free to these lawyers on the front lines to those lawyers working pro bono cases, to those lawyers in your neighborhood clinics, to those lawyers at deserving organizations, so that we could best help them do their jobs. Thank you. And so, because of artificial intelligence, I am hopeful. I am confident that this technology will mean that those lawyers serving on the front lines can get better results for their clients and become better lawyers in the process. I am sure that by building a system that allows lawyers to team up with machines, a world where justice for all isn't just a catchphrase, but a reality for every single person on Earth. And so while I may be pissed off, I am happy. Thank you.